You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now talking the strike by the Association of Resident Doctors. And uh, today is day five of the warning strike by that association at the University College Hospital, Ibadan. The strike commenced at 8 a.m. on Monday, March 15th, 2021. And the doctors are striking because they say the government has failed to pay them two months salary arrears and that's for january and february to 370 members including all house officers some medical officers and some resident doctors they're also uh, striking because of the government's failure to migrate 230 members to the ippis platform President of the resident doctors in Nigeria, uh, usage Dr. Zakaria Hussein said, it's been a tough experience for the doctors working without pay. And we've now invited the president of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Uyilawa Okwayesuhi, and we'll be bringing him on the show uh, much later. But really, this is a big story. It's made headlines. We saw it on the, on the Punch newspaper this morning. And we, we just got a feel of just how much these doctors are going through we had uh, Mr. Jida Johnson shed some light on this, talking about how if living doctors see dead doctors and their families not getting the compensation they deserve, that doesn't motivate them at all to keep giving their best on the front lines as they battle the invincible enemy of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so yes, uh, I, I agree with uh, Jida Johnson earlier, and I hope that we can quickly connect with Dr. Uilawa uh, this morning. But it's, 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 it's pretty much similar. The only difference is, yeah, if, you, if you remember sometime in 2020, there were also um, uh, conversations in the UK about uh, um, health workers and how the United Kingdom you know, need to do, needed to do better with you know, their remunerations and you know, increase their pay and all of that. Um, but it's worrisome here in Nigeria when you talk about hazard allowance and the fact that, because one of the things that was mentioned as one of the reasons for their strike initially um, when you hear that doctors aren't paid has a hazard allowance, you know, and it's not like the hazard allowance is, is that much, you know, some people have said it's even 5,000 naira. Um, so, so why are some of those things missing? Why is it difficult for the, you know, the Nigerian government, for both the federal and the state government to ensure that um, health workers and doctors, you know, themselves are paid uh, adequately and paid enough, you know, money, you know, to ensure that our health care system continues to go on uh, smoothly. Um, we also, you know, have spoken about strikes nonstop in the last few months and the last few years. It's either it's ASU or it is SANU or it is NASU or it is the doctors. Um, but there's always one body or the other who is looking, you know, for um, you know, to strike. Uh, there's also conversations really about how many of the promises that the Nigerian government makes that they actually fulfill. Uh, they make commitments, strikes are suspended, mm -hmm. and you know that's the last that you hear of it you know, until six months later when there's another threat of uh, for a strike again. Uh, yes. Dr. Uilawa, uh, good morning once again. Good morning, nice to be on your show. Thanks for joining us. I, I want us to start with talking about you know the negotiations from the past. Um, and of course, uh, how that ended, of course, the, the strike was initially suspended sometime in 2020, September, I believe. Um, what, you know, has then taken yes. place between now, between that time and now that feels, or, or, you know, that the resident doctors feel like they need to go on another strike for? Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Uila Hoysi, President of Nigeria's Resident Doctors. It has been a shameful part on the government for the past year. Based on the COVID-19, have exposed their lack of commitment to the health sector. As it stands, we have lost over 17 members to COVID-19, and up to now, no service and debt insurance has been paid to anybody. We had a meeting with the Minister of Labour and Minister of Health last year, and we were told that all doctors have a health insurance. All right, back to uh, having uh, connection problems again. Now, we hope that we can reconnect with uh, the President, National Association of Resident Doctors, this morning so he can shed more light on what exactly the situation is and the uh, likelihood of another strike. Yes. See, regarding doctors and the front lines, I just feel that if there is one sector, if there is one group of people in a country at a time like this that should be protected, in addition to business people, really, who keep the economy going, are the doctors, really. They are 
in the front line, the line of defense against COVID-19 pandemic. And lots of them have complained that they work without the requisite protective personal gear. They complain this hazard allowance that we're mentioning. We see a situation where our health budget is about less than 5%. You know, I mean, budget for health is less than 5% of the total budget allocation. We've seen, you know, reports, statistics, even the, 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 prize, the director general of the NCDC has come out to say about 800 doctors have been infected with COVID. Lots of them have died. Cases like this, is, I think it's just a shame that at the points like this where all the focus of the government should be pumped into security and health, we're seeing cases that uh, they're not being paid salaries. Doctors are dying. The families are getting zero compensation. And we keep complaining about brain drain, mass exodus of doctors. Why wouldn't they leave when we have situations like this? Do you know how long and how much the investment it takes to be a doctor in this country? Your medicine costs four, five, six, seven years, housemanship of a year. Strikes would extend that for about seven, eight years plus. You go through these things only to serve your country. I have friends who are doctors that have told me about doctor friends of theirs who died while treating COVID-19 cases. The government does need to do something. Mr. Awalia, good to have you back. Nice, yeah. nice to be here. All right. So I want you to share your experience, you know, speaking on behalf of the doctors, what it's like for them working without pay on the front line. It has been quite a disturbing issue. For the past three months, all the house officers all over the tertiary hospitals, or for the two tertiary hospitals, have not been paid. Russian doctors under the, um, the gift picks platform for the past four months now have not been paid their salaries. And you expect them to give the best in what they do. I can tell you that for the past um, one year, all discussions with the federal government have not been put to effect. We have had over 17 doctors that have died due to COVID-19. We have had doctors that have died all over Nigeria, ranging from Lassa fever, HIV, and the COVID-19. And there is no, no insurance for any doctor as it stands. We only hear paperwork, you have been insured, you are settled, and this, and nothing comes from it. Over the past five years, we are paid hazard allowance of 5,000 naira. When even the hardship allowance in the House of Senate and the House of Rep is 1.2 million naira. And you expect that there will be brain drain in Nigeria. As it stands, we are made to do work without being paid. And it's quite shameful. I thought the saying that your health is wealth. But in Nigeria, it has always, it's more like the reverse and nothing is being done from it. Right. We will say we're going on strike, the government pleads with us, and we stop, and we stop going on strike, and they will give us promises, empty promises. And in year later, the same thing we are going on strike for, we are going on strike for such things again. It's quite shameful, and I hope the government stands up to their words, okay, let, not paying lip service um, to what they do. Dr. Wee, let's have you share with us, you know, the last agreements that were reached with the government uh, before the, the strike was suspended last year. Uh, what were the things that were agreed upon? Well, was any of them uh, fulfilled uh, at all? Let's, let's start with the, the, um, the um, insurance of all doctors. As it stands, over one year, not more done for any of our doctors that have died. We hear that they have, they, they have an insured all doctors in Nigeria. And as it still speaks, stands, no doctor have had service and death insurance as it stands. It was agreed upon last year that uh, we are going to be uh, given the COVID allowance for being exposed or being working as frontline health workers. COVID allowance was paid for just three months and we're supposed to negotiate a new hazard allowance for all doctors. We are called by the Minister of Labor to come for a meeting on the 25th of February this year. And the meeting was postponed a day before. And at the this time, no meeting had been rescheduled to discuss the hazard allowance. We are made to work under hardship and nothing has been done, uh, uh, done about it. Our house officers, as it stands for since December, have been old salaries. 
thanks to um, the um, Speaker of the House of Rep, um, um, Majia Miller, that set up a meeting, and only 19 of 42 doctors were paid. Out of the 19 um, um, institutions that were paid, only half of them were still paid. We're having a big problem with the MDCN, the government uh, body that take, uh, takes, takes care of um, the house officers. And we're having bottleneck based on the registrar, Dr. Stanusen. He has been a stumbling block, and it's part of the reason why we are going on strike. He's been paid all the salaries as it stands, and you are making the last or the first part of him. We seem to be losing uh, Dr. Willawa. All right. Um, Sadly, we have that uh, odd glitch with an internet. We apologize for that. We hope to reconnect with him shortly because there are lots of questions I want to ask him about how doctors are having it in this very trying time. How is this affecting their morale? How is this affecting their, you know, motivation to just save lives? That's that really, that's really it's what, you know, is what this profession is all about. Well, they, they saw an oath. Um, and I know <laughs> to that, die. You know, <laughs> no, um, but I mean, I know doctors would, you know, flog me if I ever yeah, mentioned so that. But you, the, you, the, the thing you is, can make that argument for soldiers. Uh, yes. But, you know. but the, the thing is, you know, it is, it is, um, you know, like he mentioned, it is, it's a, it's a good time to, you know, say that COVID nineteen really exposed the inadequacies mm -hmm. in Nigeria's health uh, sector. D Doctor, do we have Welcome you now? Back, uh, Doctor. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, we, uh, we, so, so it's th th this. This, you know, is. A, a very important conversation um, and you know it, it's it's not one of those things that we should you know sweep under the rug because mm. it's important that we understand how much more investment needs to go into our health sector and not just you know with um, facilities but also with remuneration for uh, medical officers and for for doctors mm -hmm. generally and the thing um, is we don't even have enough doctors in the country no, we as don't. It is. you know you mentioned the brain drain earlier i know i have a few friends who you know have moved to canada moved to the uk moved to saudi arabia um, I have a friend who is a doctor in Saudi Arabia, and he, he, you know, at some point, I think it was two months ago, mentioned um, that they have group chats, WhatsApp group chats, where there's about 200 uh, people on each group, you know, and there's about three or four of those groups. Um, and these are doctors just in Saudi Arabia. Wow. Um, and I think on the day that we spoke, there was about 170 that arrived that week uh, to also join that number. Uh, Dr. Wee, welcome back. All right. Okay. I, I, I was hoping that we can get um, clarity on the top things that were negotiated with the government in the last uh, meeting and, you know, how far the government has gone with any of them. Is there anyone at all that has been fulfilled? At this time, none of them. All right, not go the ahead. Not the death insurance, not the, not the um, hazard allowance. I was not allowed to just sit for just three months and stop. Stop. Not uh, the provision of uh, GP is inadequate. It's inadequate because most of uh, some of our members are made to work without having any PPE available. Available. At the time, the medical training fund was, was, was paid for some members. Over, over, over a thousand and three members were not paid. Five hundred and fifty-eight members were paid in error. We have written to the Minister of Health and to the Government Office and told them that some members were paid in error and the money should be retrieved back. But as it can, over two months now, nothing has been done about it. So that's where it's concerned up you now. I want us. I want you to explain this thing, you know, from where you stand, so people across can really understand what it feels like to be in a situation where you're in the front lines and you don't even have, you know, the resources that you need to survive. 
for doctors, especially doctors, you know, in this university college, you know, hospital Ibadan who are striking or given, uh, who are on this warning strike, how is this really affecting them in terms of their morale and motivation to work? Family at home, you have to get mothers, parents at home, and you cannot even take care of their welfare. It's it disheartening and it's very, very sad. They have seen their seen, um, colleagues that have worked since December to now and have not been paid. And you expect them to take care of their age, 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 age and not parents, their, their children and families at home. It's sad. And I think it's time that government stands up to have a sensitivity. Because you cannot be making people as frontline health workers to work and they are not to their emotions. And you think the psychological is sound enough to go and see other, other, other patients? What is because the COVID-19 has exposed government in different ways. At the time, do you know that there are no functional MRIs in Nigeria? Even in national hospitals, what, what, what? they are not functional CT scans. They are not functional with the therapy. Yes, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that and our healthcare like, um, system lacks. I'm hearing you, sir. Yeah, I'm just saying that there's a lot of things that we lack, you know, with regards to healthcare, you know, besides the, you know, the, the, the part where doctors, of course, need to be paid better. Uh, we're so also talking about hazard allowance. You just mentioned 5,000 hour hazard allowance, which is, you know, embarrassing. Um, you know, but... You know, strikes have come and gone. What do you hope that you can achieve? What do you hope that you can achieve, you know, if you go on another strike? You're looking at what the government or how the government reacted to the last one. How do you think that this strike might fix anything? I'm telling you that um, we are ready to go all the way. Because it's high, it's high time to stop this thing to, to lift service. If you can be paid, you can be paid hardship allowance of 1.2 million naira, and you are paying, and you are paying your, you paying your doctors 5,000 naira to be exposed to COVID-19, to lots of fever, to HIV, and all that infectious disease. It's high time the, the government has a repeat of what they do and where their priorities lie. Well, what do you mean by go all the way Thank with you. regards to strike? Definitely, they are going to come up with the antics of, um, um, of no work, no pay. It's their normal format. And we are only hungry, and we are not going to pay for four months. So if we see this pay that we go for one month, two months, we'll go all the way. Hmm. And, they be, and we'll take all their threats. All right. Time. Dr. Oyi, the warning strike is, you know, is to end at 8 a.m. tomorrow, Saturday, uh, March 20th, 2021. So far, has uh, anyone from the government reached out to the association to negotiate, at least? Yeah, we have to uh, the Come again, please. Yeah, we are going to have a meeting on the 26th. We got a letter from the Ministry of Youth Labor. Scheduled to hold on 26th, 26th of March. But however, it's just this week now. By, by the month ending, all of us in Nigeria will go on an indefinite strike. Okay, so there's a meeting on March 26th, so let's just keep our fingers crossed. Look out for that. Yes. Hopefully, you know, we're, we're seeing a light at the end of this tunnel. Thank you very much, Dr. Owalia, uh, President of the National Association of Resident Doctors, uh, for your time on The Breakfast. Have a great day. And also, we apologize to you for the quality of uh, the audio and video in that last interview. Hopefully, we can get it right next time. Next up, we're talking sports after the break. <laughs>